Hello everybody. I didn't mean for it to take so long to finally get around to finishing these videos, but I've been doing some stuff the last few months. This is how much beard has happened since the last time. So yeah, it's been a while. Let's backtrack to when I first started my business to what my day actually looked like. Like, if I had an ideal day, what would that be? Well, I'd wake up in the morning, have my coffee from about 5 to 6. I wake up that early. You don't have to, of course. But then I would maybe go out for a jog or go out and have a cigar. I would start working at around 7, which for me, that means going into my print lab. I had, um, at the, the height of me running a lab in my garage, I had 12 machines, two really large format machines, two machines dedicated to... Uh, a different type of filament TPU for a, a side product I was doing that became a main product. And then my normal five machines or six machines that became, you know, the mainstay of my production. And those would be producing the cigar molds all day. So I would wake up, go through my kind of getting ready. And then by the time I hit the print lab, I would take all the prints from the previous day off of the platform because you'd have I'd have finished prints sitting there and I've designed my models in such a way that I don't have to do any hand finishing not all products are gonna be like that some products you'll just have to do some hand finishing with cigar molds I was able to stand them vertically and control all the angles to where they pretty much pop right off the printer ready to ship that saved me a lot of time when I first started it wasn't that way I had little breakaways I had a lot of little things that I had to clean and a bunch of inconsistencies and after about the first six months to a year I worked through that found the plastic found the right settings on the computer found the right way to design my particular models so that I didn't have to do any hand cleaning and boom I saved myself like hours of work right there and so once I had that done, my morning looked like coming in, taking all the previous finished prints that I had started yesterday off the printer, prepping the printer for another print, getting those prints started, and then if there were any orders that were now complete and ready to ship, I box them up, ship them out. Usually took me maybe about an hour to remove all the prints and get new prints started. And then after that, it took me about an additional hour, sometimes an hour and a half or two, to complete all the shipping. So there was my two and a half, three hour work day. And because the models that I had selected to sell are so large, they take like 18 hours to print. What that means is when I get them started, my job with the printers is done. It's not like having small objects where if you're printing one small object, but say you can only print a limited number of them on the size bed you have, you're probably creating work for yourself because you're going to actually have to go in there and change out the prints to increase how many you can crank out and to actually speed up your production. For cigar molds, fortunately for me, those always run overnight. So once I get them started, my job is done with 3D printing. Um, so that's another helpful tip that you might consider is the size of your product or being able to load up your print bed. Let's say you choose something small, but you still have a big print bed. You might still have a 12 to 18 hour print if, you know, you have them densely clustered and it's building them all at once. There are ways to kind of create this workflow for yourself. And that's it. That's what my 3D printing ideal day was when I finally had everything tuned in. Um... One big tip, 3D printers also need maintenance. By far, they are some of the most maintenance-free things I've ever had to deal with. Like, there is no comparison between trying to run a CNC shop or some other kind of machining and 3D printing. Not at all. Once I got my tungsten nozzles for my 3D printer, I was off to the races. Those are nozzles that don't wear down. So, as long as I keep my printers in tip-top shape... Uh, which is relatively easy to do, by the way, they kind of take care of themselves, you're good to go. So my maintenance schedule, and, and at first I didn't really know this, like a machine would break down, I'd have to s deal with it. And that's another thing I got tired of is like, if you let your machines just run until one breaks down, eventually you're going to have work for yourself. That will start to pile up. So what I did is I made one day each quarter where I would spend a full eight-hour day literally going into each printer, tuning it, replacing the parts that might need replacing, cleaning it up, oiling it and greasing it because they have these bars, you know, like bearings and such like that. And if you do that, if you're on top of your maintenance for your machines, 
I mean, they're they're almost flawless. Like I've got two robos in my in my room next door. I've drastically reduced print lab right now, um, but those machines have been running for five years, and I have only replaced like stepper motors or uh, you know various little wiring parts, but nothing major. Total cost of maintenance on each printer might have been like fifty to a hundred bucks to be honest. So if you choose the right printer and you get your maintenance schedule down, you reduce your workload. Another big tip that I have is to choose the right accessories and you will save yourself a lot of time. Probably the accessory that has saved me more time than my tungsten nozzles is this. It's a spatula, the build tag spatula. Really, this thing is, it has saved so many prints. So if you're rolling on a glass bed or you've just got a, a basically a, a completely fixed flat bed as opposed to something that can flex or some of those fancier things, this will save you lots of headache and lots of money. Before I had this thing and I was rocking on the Robo R1, which had a glass print bed, every now and then when I was trying to remove a cigar mold, it would actually break the glass bed. And that just... That got to me, you know, like I hated that. Anything with a big, flat surface area was a danger of actually damaging the printer. And so the normal, you know, little scrapers that they give you with a 3D printer just didn't do the trick. This does it every time. And what you do is you put it up underneath the corner of the print, just kind of wedge it in there. It's got a very, very flat, sharp edge. Once you get it underneath, you just kind of bump it with your hand and it'll get it completely underneath it and boop, you can save yourself. Now, I don't know, maybe I should make a video about this thing itself, but basically you'd go all around the part, not just from one side, but once you get it completely under from one side, go completely under from there, completely under from there until you have loosened the entire bottom and you will save your print and save your print bed every time. What I've gone over today, establish a routine Set up your prints to take eight plus hours so you aren't having to babysit your prints all day and change them. Regular maintenance will save headaches and your build tax spatula will save so many prints that you're definitely going to thank me later. So I hope this video has helped you. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to show you how I automated my fulfillment with a free shipping software.